probably the single best bait you could use. Check this out, guys. I caught a cabazon. Come on, come on. Asher's on two back here. But check out this green link. The color is on his chin. It's like a rainbow. We're not leaving until they stop biting. The bite is on. Oh yeah, guys. Let's get it. Nice sunny day. Nice, beautiful, sunny day. We're gonna go suck some shrimp. What's up guys? So we're just down here doing a little shrimp sucking. I don't got, know if you guys recognize this, but this is a shrimp sucking gun. And the way it works is it's just a piece of PVC that's got a tube in it. And this is kind of a plunger running all the way through the tube. And then right here, there's actually an air hole that goes all the way through that. So I pull the plunger all the way back past this. Now the suction's been released. So you can stick this down into water, almost like a big squirt gun for like when you're rafting or something and go and you can fill it with sand and water. And when it pops all the way up past that, it'll go thunk and just fall out. Or you can pull it up and then shoot it all back down. So I'm walking around on the beach here, looking for little holes in the sand, little spots where you see a little hole from like a clam or a crab or a shrimp. And sometimes there'll be some black sand spit up like that. And we're just cruising the flats, looking for spots, sucking up shrimp out of those holes. So what you do is you stick it down over a hole, and then you plunge down and you pull up at the same time. And then you spit it out like that. So after you suck up your hole, either you're going to spit out your contents like so, and you're going to find that there's just a sand shrimp sitting in them, right? Or in the bottom of your hole, there's going to be some real soft, murky sand. And climbing up out of it and digging around, there'll be a little shrimp. So this is a sand shrimp. And this one's a male. It's got its giant combat claw right there. And that one can't really hurt you with its pinching power, but the tip of it is real sharp. So if it gets a hold of you like that, oh, sorry, bud. Um, it could do a little bit of damage. But we're gonna end up tearing that claw off when we use it for bait anyways. You could leave it on, but we usually tear the claws off. But here's, here's your classic sand shrimp. Big fat shrimpy tail, little body probably the single best bait you could use on the west coast for fishing off of the jetty. Sand shrimp um, casted out off of the rocks is pretty much a guaranteed small rockfish or a green ling and uh, maybe a lucky ling cod or something like that as well. And this, my friends, is what we're looking for, for shrimp. Look at this bad boy. It's a good sand shrimp. That's what we're looking for right there. That's like a small one we found. a little bit of money on buying bait and not go down and have to spend 
like five, six, seven dollars on a dozen sand shrimp and only really get like a dozen casts out of those sand shrimp, go ahead and find yourself a shrimp and gun. You can get these things for about 20 bucks at a lot of different places. You can make yourself one for like three, four, five dollars or something like that. Lots of videos online how to make a shrimp and gun. We're gonna go ahead and put one of those together for you guys too. So make sure that you stay tuned to the channel and you'll learn how to make one of these things right here. But um, really fun way to get yourself bait better, fresher bait than you're ever gonna get at the store. And um, sand shrimp are expensive. We got ourselves probably 10, $15 worth of sand shrimp already this morning. So get yourself a sucking gun. So we're gonna suck up as many of them as we can, get them into the bucket, and then we'll get off and do another adventure. All right, guys, we have collected probably, I don't know, it looks like two dozen or so. Good size sand shrimp, like the sand shrimp you're looking for. Um, now it's time to, uh, what did I say on that one episode? It's time to turn this bait into fish. Let's do this. Sherpa and all this gear out to the end of this jetty. This jetty's got to be like 27 miles long or something like that. <laughs> I don't know how far it is, but it's always longer than I remember it being. This is where there's water yeah. flowing through this. My tire. All right, guys, we made it out to the end of the jetty. Man, I'll tell you what, I hike miles on rivers, straight up. I hike miles on rivers. And there is nothing like hiking out to the end of a jetty. Any jetty fisherman will tell you that, uh, dude, it just, you know, if you're, hike, you're hiking in the sand, you're hiking in sand, and sand's horrible to hike in. Um, if not, you're hiking on slippery big boulders you're jumping around on. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. And if you're out of shape like I am right now, you're gonna be breathing heavy and sweating all over the place. So let's get rigged up. Let's get some baits in the water and catch some fish, finally. Look, I got a fish, but I'm stuck on the rocks. Try. Come on guys, but I'm snagged up. I can still feel the fish. We're just hoping that it unsnags itself. There we go, there we go. We're out, we're out of the rocks, guys. Whew. A little greenling. First fish of the day. Look at that, this has got a nice little fish right there. Here, let me um, move my line in real quick and then I'll go down there for it. Oh, look, oh, it's a wing. It's a wing. It's a green wing. That's a good green wing. That's a good green wing right there. Hey, look at that. First, nice little green wing, probably about uh, 15 inch. It's got a nice thick steak. But check out the colors on him. He's got the white dots. It's got kind of a blue, a blue chin, jaw spot. I don't know if you guys can really see all that. But wow, he is a beautiful green leaf. And he is gonna taste delicious. So another one for the box. God, I can't wait to see the color. He's gonna have some blue meat in there, I guarantee it. He'll have some, uh, some nice tealish blue fillets. So we'll get him bonked out and get back in there. Look at those fins. Cabasons always have wild, wild, cool, big fins that stick out like that. So Cabazon season is closed. Uh, it's not opening until July, and they gotta be 16 inches to keep. This one might just barely be a keeper. Um, he looks like he's about 16, but the season's closed, so we're gonna let it go. But let's check him out again real quick. 
way. Look at that, and then look at that cool badass side. You can see he's got like a running line, these big wild fins. Like look at that insane set of fins, right? Top, bottom. Calico looking. All of those are just, yeah, really, really cool. Kind of like a, a mix between a sculpin or a bullhead and a lingcod. It's like a lingcod with wings. Yeah, what a beautiful <laughs> fish though, right? Look at that. Cabazon are some of the coolest fish around out here. Let's go ahead and throw him back in the ocean so that he's not, uh, you know, out of here being bugged too long. But what a cool fish, right? All right, let's go set him free. See you in July. Yep, see you in July. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always worried that when I catch a fish and I let it go, that he was on his way to a really important appointment or meeting and that he's gonna be late now and he's gonna catch hell from his boss. So hopefully I didn't make that fish too late. <laughs> Looks like Chris is on too. You know, it's a lot funner, a lot funner to fish this jetty with a little rod and light line, but man, it could be a really bad thing. Uh, oh, shit, dude. Keep fighting it. It's right there. It's right down here. That's a green ling. Oh, really uh, that's the other thing about using that really light line yeah, you, is that a little green wing like that feels like a monster. A that's uh, yeah, let's get up in the zone. Let's get Asher out of the danger. I got my back turned to the ocean right now. If you guys you guys read the YouTube comments on our page. There's a whole lot of never turn your back to the ocean like that. But like Chris pointed out, if you're never going to turn your back to the ocean, how do you get off of the jetty? <laughs> Walk backward and just skip rocks. Uh, All right, guys. So I just got that. I just got that other greenling. It's not too big. You know, these things come in so many different colors and shapes and sizes. Um, this one's got the dark. There's some yellow spots. He's got some blue and white on his head. Um, he's a little small. I think uh, since we got those two other greenling, uh, I'm gonna let this one go, be a little bit bigger, and uh, hope to catch his mama. He, uh, he kind of resembles the, uh, the cabazon that Asher just caught, if you look at it. His fins, he has the wings going on there. Actually, his wings are really pretty and colorful. I don't know if you guys can even see that. But he, re he, he, he looks just like one, except for the size of the mouth. A lot smaller mouth. But anyway, this one's a little small. We got two nice ones deep for tacos. I'm gonna let this one go. I'm gonna let him get bigger. So, peace out to him. You know, guys, you guys can come down here and cast these monster swim baits with these big jig heads and uh, wrap them in the squid, do all that stuff we've been telling you. Um, your chance of catching ling cod is very, very good. But if you guys wanna just come down here and catch the most, I swear, the most amount of species, try this way. You guys want to come down here and catch a bunch of different fish, enough fish to make tacos, to make a fish fry, you know, to do all that kind of stuff. Come down here and just fish sand shrimp. So basically I'm rocking a high-low rig, which if you don't know what high-low rig is, it's where your weight is below your hook. And you're basically just casting out there, keeping your gear close to the jetty as possible without snagging up. Don't watch him, because he's been snagging up every time, even though he's caught some fish. Time snagging up every cast, but the jetty is very unforgiving. So you're gonna lose a lot of gear no matter how you fish it. But if you wanna come down here and catch a lot of species, a lot of, have a really good shot at catching a bunch of fish, whether it's greenling, cabazon, lingcod, perch, sand shrimp. Go get yourself some sand shrimp, just like we did this morning. And just come down here and fish like you are, you know, fishing for trout in a lake or something like that. Just sitting here with bait on the bottom. You know, you can move it around a little bit if you want to, but for the most part, I'm just standing here doing still fishing and uh, we're hooking fish left and right. Ash is on right now. We're definitely catching enough fish for tacos and whatever other feast we're gonna do tonight. So, like I said, come on down here, catch a bunch of fish. Easy, nice, nice greenling Nice, right there. big, beautiful greenling. Beautiful little blue greenling. Look at how cool. Woo Don't worry guys, I'm standing right here and making sure he's safe. Well, I got my back turned to the ocean. Look at how cool the fins on this greenling are also. 
Very similar to a Cabazon, like Chris was showing off on the last one. This one's got some cool markings. It's one of those blue fish. It's got some beautiful blue spots. What an awesome fish Greenling are. You know, you could come down here and throw big gear, throw big pieces of plastic, throw, um, you know, whole squids and whole herring and stuff. And your chances of getting into a big rockfish or a lingcod or something like that are pretty decent. But um, it's also a real easy way of getting skunked. You can come down here and throw big pieces of plastic for hours, not catch anything, and lose like $20 worth of gear. I've lost like $10 worth of gear today already just trying to catch a lingcod this morning, you know? But sand shrimp is basically the best single bait you could throw out into the ocean off of a jetty or the beach. Uh, squid is a pretty good one, chunks of fish, um, things like sand crabs and octopus and pile worms and all that kind of stuff is also really, really good. But if you want like your best universal chance at getting into a fish, just casting off of the jetty, uh, sand shrimp is, is your jam. You can buy yourself a shrimping gun and go suck some shrimp like we did this morning, or you can go hit up a tackle shop and uh, any of these tackle shops up and down the Oregon coast have sand shrimp when sand shrimp are in. So beautiful greenling like that, that's gonna become uh, tacos for us today. And um, I'm stoked on it. Chris let that other one go because it was a little bit smaller, but this guy's perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep him. Alright, Chris is on. Look at that. Here's the brand. Another spider. What is it? Another green thing. Look at the colors on this one. Wow, Alright, so earlier we were talking how the green wing comes in all colors and sizes and holy cow, this one is beautiful. So this one, hang on, let me get my hook out real quick. So this one actually has the blue on him. Come on, I'm on. Asher's on too back here. But check out this green wing. I don't know if you guys can see his color. He's like a brick, ooh. He's like got a brick red color to his fins. And I mean, look at that. If you can see that, just bright red. And you got there another red one. This is a little bigger. <laughs> but we basically have, this, this doesn't actually happen often. Greenling come in so many different colors and stuff, it's kind of rare to catch two in the same to color. Catch like a pair like this. Dude, but yeah, it's kind of rare to get the same color Greenling back to back. Like I said, this is a little bit bigger. Greenling are hard to hold. They don't have a big mouth. Nope. And I mean, their gill plate's tiny. But I'm gonna let mine go. We might keep his. I don't know. Like I said, they come in so many colors. They are a beautiful fish. Beautiful, beautiful red. And like, look at the bright blue of its mouth. Um, let that one go, Chris, and we'll go ahead and keep this one. Um, just because I know that it has the blue flesh in it, and I really like that blue colored fish flesh. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay. Small. We'll go ahead and let him go. We'll right, keep this gone. one. Bye, bye, bud. Look at the badass, cool, wild, beautiful colors on that fish right there. Look at those bright red fins and that bright blue mouth. Cool little rockfish. So there's a few different setups that are real classic when you're jetty fishing on the bottom like this. Most people are usually using something like a Carolina rig or a drop shot rig, like an over under rig, where your weight is on the bottom and then you go up a little bit and you run a little line down and then you put your hook, kind of like this rig up right here. The Carolina kind of style setup is just like a classic bottom rig with a sliding weight, kind of like this right here, where you have your little weight and then a sliding line uh, down to your hook. Those are probably the two most popular setups as far as fishing on the bottom using sand shrimp um, right off of the jetty, but also casting into the surf and um, casting off of rocks, just kind of bottom fishing in general. Those are gonna be two of your most go-to rigs. What you wanna do is you wanna get yourself a decent sized medium action rod. Seven to nine feet is great. Um, as large as 12 feet is usable. Anything shorter than seven, you're not gonna really have enough um, size to get out past the rocks and be able to pull your line up at a decent enough angle to not just get snagged up a lot. You're gonna wanna rig that rod up, whatever rod you're using, with between 20 and 60 pound test line 
I go with 40 pound braid because it's really smooth and it casts. I've used 30 before, I feel like it broke off a whole lot more often on me. And I've used 50 before, and I feel like the 50 had a little bit more drag going out of the reel. And I'm really liking how this 40 has been casting for me. So I use 40 pound braid, and I usually run that down to whatever kind of leader I'm gonna be running. And the leader will vary also. I'll, I'll use 30 pound fluorocarbon sometimes if I'm fishing for lingcod or something a little bit heavier, all the way down to like 20 pound mono to try to catch green ling and um, surf perch and stuff like that, something a little bit lighter. But your jam is gonna be some sand shrimp. Two, four, six, somewhere right in there is a pretty perfect size hook for sand shrimping. I like to use a J hook, like a long um, shank, but Chris is using like an octopus style hook, like a little rounded, almost salmon steelhead style hook. Either will work great. I like the J hook, because there's a little bit more body and you can actually hold on the shrimp with that little uh, uh, bit more body. The next thing you wanna do is you're gonna get a little bit of magic thread. Either the, the red stuff, and the red stuff is much skinnier and will break a little bit easier and is actually perfect for sand shrimp. But the white stuff that's a little bit thicker and a little more heavy duty, it's like sturgeon and maybe heavier salmon magic thread. That's what you're gonna to wanna to use to tie up squid. If you're ever tying squid to your swim baits like we've done in some other episodes. And it works fine for the sand shrimp. You don't need to have that little skinny red stuff. The fish aren't bothered by that magic thread at all. And you wanna use that, just take like a little foot length and just wrap it all over the sand shrimp to keep it staying on the hook so that the fish just can't take off with it. And then you'll hook up just like Chris has done right now. Oh, look at this colored one. Wow, what oh. a wild, <laughs> wild pastelian pink Dude, fish. look at the chin on that thing. Oh my gosh. Look at He's the colors right on that. He's hooked right in the mouth, so let's go ahead and make sure Look at the color. We get a cool look at him and then we'll let him go, but let's hold him over here over the, over the rocks. Him, let's get him low so if he comes off. But look at the colors on his chin. It's like a rainbow. I don't know if you guys have seen those paint jobs on cars where they kind of turn colors, but that's what that looks like. Full pastel, iridescent. Pink. Look at that crazy blue mouth. That color combination right there is just like. Right. Hooks barely in there. Let's open that mouth a little. Look how blue. Crazy blue mouth. Yeah. What a beautiful fish. Look at those crazy bright pink fins you can see in Chris's hand right now. But let's just get him back in before he flaps around the rocks a little bit. Go ahead and give him a toss, Chris. Boom. Bye, bud. Dude, All that right, was that was a gorgeous that was one. Crazy, like we were talking about earlier. These fish come in more colors than I think any other species on the coast. On I'm, our I'm not, coast, not, there's no way sure. yeah, on our coast. Like I said, as close to tropical as you're gonna get. But we're not leaving these greenling until they stop biting. The bite is on. 